Your mother said in one of the conversations that I heard that was that's on the internet that the judge is the one who needs to decide what's what they can do, what what the judge can do. It's almost like the judge has become your parent, not the mother, not the father. How do you feel about that? The judge Kiesenberg, for example, does he know you? No, he doesn't know me. Has he, he's never talked to you? No. He's never sat down and he said, you know, tell me all about yourself. Um, you know, so this judge, though, who... No, the only time he's ever talked to me was yelling at me in the hallway in the courthouse for taking food that my dad gave me. When was that? It was right after, it was like an hour or two after the court hearing. Oh, you mean last time, last week? Okay, I wasn't there for that, but um, how, what did, what else did he do? I mean, Judge Kiesenberry, to me, when I saw him, it looked like he was pretty um, unfair, though, yes. towards your dad. And uh, we do have the transcripts and we do have the audio. And everybody who's heard it so far has been shocked to see the way that he acted towards you. Um, so he didn't act any differently towards you. He didn't try to say, you know, try to make you feel welcome or try to like, you know, come on, son, let's talk about this. No, not at all. So you think that um, he just didn't care? Or was it worse than that? It was worse. He was, he was mad at me when I was trying to tell him how I had been hurt and he, and he didn't care, he yelled at me for taking food that my dad gave me in front of everyone. When I was just sitting there, I hadn't said anything to him. Wow. So, he's not a nice guy. He's And he doesn't know anything about me or, or like what happens at my mom's house. Yeah. And that's what I think is a shame because, again, I know you were trying to speak and I, I was there watching what was taking place and every time you know, your dad would said, well, let him speak. He can talk with you in chambers. He can talk with you here. You know, he can do this. And the attorney, uh, Bob Thornton, um, I would like to nickname him, you know, that there's SpongeBob. And I think his, his website is Lawyer Bob, but I think he's Scum Bob. <laughs> All the stuff that he did. I mean, he was just really, really, uh, he was a dirty, dirty attorney. Uh, I know he was trying to protect, you know, making sure that certain things wouldn't get out. But to me, even that attorney, um, seemed abusive because if you are in a position that you feel that you're in some type of danger you should have a voice to say something and uh, and he was denying you that voice okay let, let's go back to what happened afterwards then when you went back to your your mother's house because you had to go back mm -hmm. you don't want to go back no they I stayed at the courthouse until it closed and then all of the the security people there they handcuffed me and then they took me and drove me to my mom's house. Are you serious? Yes. This was just a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. Say that again, what they did. So, so I stayed there all day refusing to leave, asking mm -hmm. if I could go with my dad. And then when it came time to close, the, like another person I hadn't seen came and said that it was time to go. I said, all right, I'm not going there. I'm not going to an abusive home. And so then he went and talked to Judge Cuisenberry, who was still there. And he came out, and then he handcuffed me, and then he walked me out to the car, and he, he drove me back to my mom's house. Now, was that Bailiff Kane? Do you remember who, what the name of the person was? He didn't say. Yeah, because there, there was a man there. His name was Bailiff Kane. He was, the, when I was talk, trying to talk with you, there was a guy that came up, and like, what are you doing? How come you have this recording device? It wasn't him? No, it was not that guy. Okay, because he seemed like, even though he was a little bit harsh at the beginning, he, he seemed like he was interested a little bit in fairness, but this other guy appears like he's not really that interested in it. No, he wasn't there all day until, that, until he, he, he just came there to take me. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Judge Kiesenberry, or Kiesenberry, um, however you pronounce his last name, uh, to me the entire time, like I said, he seemed to be um, arrogant, unfair, abusive. And I, I will say it, he was abusive. He was abusive towards your dad. And even when he addressed me, he was threatening me. I, was the, I thought, is he going to throw me in jail? Because all I was trying to do was talk with you. Um, he does not appear to be a good man from my perspective. So what happens next time you go to court and you're in front of Judge Kiesenberry? Do you think anything's going to change with him? No, but I would like to. Too. I would like him to listen to me, but I don't think he will. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say? I mean, I don't know what else to ask you right now. I know right now you're waiting. You know, your mom's going to be coming to pick you up. I can just, I, I can just kind of say like what the abuse they've done to me. I mean, they've humiliated me. They've made me live in fear every day I'm there. They've, they've hit me. They've, they've thrown me around. 
and then they lie to everyone about it. Like, they lie to anyone who asks and says that it's fine. And then the police in Parker County just call it parenting. And they've been out there multiple times, and they do nothing. How many times have they been out there? You said multiple times. It's like, throughout the past year, it was like maybe like five or six times. Do you think, okay, in a situation like this, then the judge is ordering you to go back, have you handcuffed, put into a, a police car, and driven out to, hit, out to the house? Mm. Um, if anything bad would have happened, do you think he should be held accountable for his actions? Yes. So, okay. Um, because Jimmy could have decided any day that he wanted to hit me or throw me around, and then who, and then the judge allowed it to happen. Do you have any way that you can appeal to anybody about what's going on, or does everybody just continually ignore you? Nobody cares. I haven't been able to tell anybody. Do you mind if this video goes out, if it's public? No, I don't care. I mean, the only reason that I was talking with you the other day is because I thought, this is so wrong that you have no opportunity to speak. I saw what the attorney was doing, and I mean, I, I, I know your dad. Um, I, I don't know the whole story between you and your mother and, and Jimmy and, you know, your parents' interaction and stuff like that. But I know your dad well enough. And I know that uh, that the stuff that he told me and the police records and the medical records that I saw seemed credible enough that I wanted to hear your side of it. I am uh, sorry that you've gone through this. I'll do what I can with this to put it out. And... Uh, Maybe we'll see what happens with that.